Yes, uh, hello. Let me we can hear you, we cannot see you. Yes, uh, let us uh, try to connect video, which was not possible until now. So Okay, there here we, we are. are. Hello, hello, hello President Sikostas, uh, how are you? <laughs> it's a pleasure to see thank, you. Please, please thank go you very ahead. much uh, for the opportunity you are giving me today to address your chamber um, with uh, the latest transport proposals, uh, which are the efficient and green mobility strategy. Um, this package uh, follows up on our uh, strategy uh, for sustainable and smart mobility and is in line with the European Green Deal's objectives. Ultimately, all our proposals will uh, aim to help the uh, European Union to meet its targets of reducing transport emissions by 90% by 2050. Uh, but they also uh, improve the transport system in many other ways. So in the December Efficient and Green Mobility Package, um, we uh, came uh, hot on the heels of uh, um, the Fit for 55 package, which were adopted in uh, July last year. And uh, we'll keep up this momentum. We have no time to waste in modernizing the transport and the mobility. To recall, uh, the Fit for 55 proposals target cleaner fuels for aviation and maritime transport in refuel aviation and fuel maritime, as well as uh, the infrastructure needed to power cleaner cars, lorries, ships, and planes. Um, the proposal on alternative fuels infrastructure regulation sets binding deployment targets to ensure we have sufficient infrastructure, including electric recharging, and hydrogen refueling for light and heavy duty vehicles. Uh, also, shoreside electricity supply in maritime and inland waterway ports, and electricity supply for uh, stationary aircraft. The binding targets are needed uh, to make sure we hit the original uh, goal of cutting the CO2 emissions by 55% by 2030. And then also necessary to that we um, leave no region behind, in particular those in which the uptake of electric vehicles is lower and where there is not yet a strong enough business case for recharging points. So our targets are intentionally flexible to take into consideration different regional realities. Some of you may uh, be concerned that the rapid deployment of infrastructure will be a financial burden for regions, and that uh, new zero emission vehicles are also more expensive. Various uh, EU financing instruments support regional investment, including the Connecting Europe facility, the Recovery and Resilience facility, the European Structural Investment Funds. Now, our proposals on aviation and maritime uh, for cleaner fuels are also crucial to um, remote islands and outermost regions that depend exclusively on those modes of transport to be connected. We don't want to reduce the mobility of the citizens, but we wish that all transport modes become cleaner and smarter. This is beneficial for people living in those areas and their economy. All Fit for 55 proposals are currently being discussed in the Parliament and in the Council. We hope that soon we will be able to enter into interinstitutional discussions and we can soon work towards greener mobility uh, solutions. Moving on to uh, the proposals in the efficient and green mobility package adopted in December, this aim to modernize the trans-European transport network, address urban mobility challenges, boost long distance and cross-border train travel, and further promote intelligent transport systems. The impacts uh, will be felt by many, from passengers and city dwellers to those uh, living along our TENT network, and of course, the transport sector itself. I think the role of the trans European network, the TENT, uh, in EU connectivity and cohesion is uh, often overlooked. It is the backbone of our transport system, ensuring connectivity to our regions. It strengthens economic, social, and territorial cohesion and makes our internal market function smoothly. 
accessibility and connectivity for all regions are part of the priorities of the TENT policy. And that includes connectivity for those territories where transport is crucial for them, in particular, uh, the outmost regions and other remote rural insular peripheral and the sparsely populated uh, regions. These objectives are spelled out very clear in the proposal. I'm also aware that the 10T is a sensitive issue for some regions and cities. Some would like to add new sections to the core network, others want their cities integrated into the transport corridors. But we need to pay particular attention to the projects uh, with added value, meaning the cross-border sections, missing links, and bottlenecks of our European corridors. However, I do agree um, to accelerate uh, progress on parts of the network. We cannot just wait for 2050. This is why we have proposed a new intermediate deadline of 2040 for a so-called extended core network. So in our proposals, um, we acknowledge the importance of urban nodes, their role in our transport system, Large parts of our citizens live in urban areas or travel daily to work. At, some, at the same time, uh, citizens residing in cities suffer the most from uh, negative externalities such as noise, congestion, and air pollutants. In full respect to the principle of subsidiarity and to the competence of the authorities on the ground, mainly local and regional authorities, we want to help addressing these problems. We want to better integrate these cities into the wider 10 t and improve the interconnection between local, regional, interregional, and international transport. So we are upgrading certain cities to urban nodes. The entire 10 t network now contains 424 such nodes. Cities. Cities are working hard to adopt sustainable and smart transport solutions. And I do not want to leave them alone in this. We are enabling the EU framework for the member states, regions, and cities to develop safe, accessible, inclusive, smart, resilient, and zero emission urban mobility well ahead of 2050. We set a more ambitious approach to sustainable urban mobility planning um, with related indicators. This links with new requirements in uh, the revised NT regulation on the network to adopt a sustainable urban mobility plan, the so-called SAMS, and to collect relevant data. The SAMS with uh, public transport and active mobility, like walking and cycling uh, at their heart, have proven an effective and increasingly popular tool implemented in many countries and not only in the EU. We will support member states, regions and cities with the data collection needed for sustainable urban mobility indicators. We also need to acknowledge that uh, deliveries in urban areas have skyrocketed. This trend is set to continue, meaning more congestion, more pollution. That is why we are recommending that cities pay attention to sustainable logistics and the voluntary sharing of data between stakeholders. We are asking that cities have a sustainable urban logistic plan. This plan should be integrated into the sustainable urban mobility plan. New mobility services and devices are also likely here to stay. So we need to think about their integration into the overall urban mobility system. We are about to issue guidance on local passenger transport on demand uh, and recommendations um, have uh, uh, already well uh, been presented on the safe use uh, for micro mobility devices like uh, e-scooters. Uh, the third proposal of the December package is rail action plan. This is a concrete finale for the European Year of Rail. And thank you once again for the support shown by cities and the regions uh, that welcomed the Connecting Europe Express. It was an incredible journey. Now, uh, the rail action uh, plan identifies 10 of the biggest obstacles that are holding us back from making rail a more attractive option for long and cross-border uh, journeys. They include the redundant national rules, complicated ticketing, uh, the slow uptake of digital technologies, 
So we set out concrete steps to remove this hurdles uh, in the coming years. From uh, faster railway tracks to better roads and bigger multimodal hubs, uh, this infrastructure connects Europe in all its different parts, but digital infrastructure brings us even closer together. So our proposal to update the current directive on intelligent transport systems will increase efficiency in urban transport and um, we hope it's going to step up uh, also the road safety. Uh, new developments such as uh, mass mobility as a service and uh, uh, connected, uh, cooperative connected and automotive mobility um, cannot become a reality without ubiquitous uh, ITS uh, deployment. So um, this is uh, what our directive um, sets, basically the overall policy framework. So ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, these proposals will also bring uh, us closer to our emission targets. And I'm counting on your support for both packages as we move forward. I look forward to consulting you again regarding implementation, where uh, regions, cities, municipalities are critical in our policy success. Uh, all our plans would be nothing without the implementation, so here you have a tremendous role to play. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward for your comments and suggestions. Thank you, President Sikostas. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for your very, very inspiring uh, words and uh, having set the uh, main uh, road on which we will walk together in order to achieve uh, these very uh, important for all of us goals that you have set. I would like now to open our debate and uh, in order to have uh, time, uh, I would suggest that uh, the opinion of uh, Adrian Teban that was foreseen for 11.30 as well as the voting slot at 11.40 to go after, at four o'clock uh, after the break and after the debate on uh, the Conference on the Future of Europe, together with the other opinions, uh, so that we have time until 12 o'clock that we have the Adamovich Prize, if you agree with me. Uh, this will give us uh, the opportunity to have uh, an interesting discussion with Commissioner uh, Valean. So, uh, I would like to start by giving the floor to Mr. Teban from the EPP. Thank you, <clears throat> President, uh, dear Commissioner Adina Valian. Thank you very much that to our uh, opportunity to debate this uh, important issue. I would like to raise two important questions. The first one, a just transition needs also adequate resources. Uh, the cost of the transport of the transition will be high. Green transition will affect all regions with a link uh, to the automotive industry, a sector which accounts for almost 6 million jobs in the core automotive and adjacent industries. Uh, 2 million workers in car manufacturing and supply will need radical upskilling and retraining. 1 million jobs will be lost. Only in my hometown, Kujir, 3,000 jobs could be lost uh, in the future. These jobs, especially in the automotive supply industry, will disappear and, of course, new ones will emerge probably in other regions. This territorial impact needs more reflection from the European Commission. We demand a multi-level dialogue on the transition of the automotive industry. We need a just transition fund dedicated to the millions of workers in the automotive industry. The model of this fund can be the just transition mechanism that helps out coal regions. And the second is about cohesion. We fully support the objective to reduce CO2 emissions in transport sector. Uh, sustainable urban mobility plans in each city already tackle air pollution and CO2 emissions. But also we must increase European cohesion on infrastructure. Regional disparities in the deployment of alternative fuels infrastructure must be duly addressed in less developed or remote regions. This shift towards carbon zero mobility cannot be done without social support and European cohesion. No region must be left behind. Thank you very much for attention. Mulțumesc pentru atenția. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Teban. Mr. Drexler from the APP. Ja, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, ich möchte mich recht herzlich für Ihre Ausführungen bedanken. Die Dekarbonisierung des Verkehrs stellt eine der zentralen Herausforderungen in der Bekämpfung des Klimawandels dar. Dafür braucht es, wie Sie angesprochen haben, auch eine entsprechende Infrastruktur. Ich möchte unsere Stellungnahme zu den TNT nicht vorgreifen, aber persönlich begrüße ich den Vorschlag, das erweiterte Kernnetz bis 2040 umzusetzen. Damit haben wir einen ambitionierten, aber auch realistischen Zeitplan. Mit entsprechenden Ressourcen versehen wird uns eine Verbesserung der Schieneninfrastruktur gelingen. Dies auch in meinem, äh, meiner Region, dem Land Steiermark in Österreich. Darüber hinaus ist es außerordentlich begrüßenswert, dass die Europäische Kommission die zentrale Rolle urbaner Knotenpunkte aufgegriffen hat. Wir als lokale und regionale äh, Gebietskörperschaften sind hier äh, mit Sicherheit ihre Partner. Aber es gibt natürlich auch regionale Auswirkungen dieser grünen Transformation zu bedenken. Sie haben selbst davon gesprochen, keine Region zurücklassen zu wollen. Das gehört meines Erachtens ganz besonders auch im Zusammenhang mit ähm, Automobilregionen, Regionen mit Auto- oder Zulieferindustrie ähm, hervorgehoben. Denn die Vorschläge zu den flotten Grenzwerten für die Autoindustrie haben hier enorme Auswirkungen. Ich bin selbst als Vorsitzender der Automotive Intergroup des ADR besonders mit diesem Thema befasst. 14,6 Millionen Menschen in Europa arbeiten in dieser Industrie und ihren damit verbundenen Industrien. Die grüne Mobilitätswende kann nur gelingen, wenn sie auch für diese Menschen und für die Regionen mit Auto- und Zulieferindustrie ein Erfolg ist. Hier fehlt eine fundierte Analyse der Auswirkungen der Reform auf die betroffenen Regionen. Eine aktuelle Studie zeigt, dass abhängig von den Flottengrenzwerten und CO2-Standards bis zu 275.000 Arbeitsplätze EU-weit verloren gehen können. Berichterstatter Theban, der selbst auch Mitglied der Automotive Intergroup ist, hat das hervorragend herausgearbeitet und ich bedanke mich für seine Mitarbeit. Ich lade Sie, Frau Kommissarin, ein, unsere Erwägungen mit in Ihre Überlegungen aufzunehmen. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith from the PES, please. Yes. Good morning, Commissioner. Um, I'm representing the Brussels capital region, and as an inhabitant of Brussels, you definitely know our uh, traffic and uh, mobility issues. Uh, on the basis, I used to be responsible for mobility, now urbanism, and on the basis of this experience, I absolutely agree with you that in terms of subsidiarity, regions and cities are the ones that are responsible for implementing the sustainable strategies and that we have to do the work on the ground. But we need the European uh, Union and we need the European Commission. And your new EU urban, urban mobility framework, we believe is giving a good step in the right direction for making sustainable um, urban mobility um, plans for the urban nodes mandatory in this new regulation. But as you asked, we will give you uh, two uh, basic uh, suggestions. They are particularly important for us, for the PS group. First of all, it's the need of public collective transports, not only in cities, but also connection with the rural and suburban areas in Europe. And secondly, all these innovation solutions have to make transport more efficient. So first of all, collective transport, it is essential. The transition to electric cars is good, but what do we have? A traffic jam with electric cars remains a traffic jam, so we need collective uh, transport. It also enables us to give more public space to people and everybody in the after COVID area will agree that cities should be places for people and not places for car. And that active mobility is necessary and that we have to avoid more urban sprawl. Secondly, we need more convergence at the EU level. For instance, the standardization of transport data, the harmonization of ticketing in Europe are solutions that can help our European citizens, can facilitate their life when they are moving in the European Union or within uh, countries. And of course, Commissioner, we are there to help you, to suggest you, to work together to give a good urban mobility framework, because we should not forget mobility is a mean. It's not an objective, it's the mean to get a better quality of life in our regions and cities. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, the floor now to Ms. Boudino from the PES Group. Oui, Monsieur le Président, euh, Madame la Commissaire, le secteur des transports est l'un des secteurs dans lequel les émissions de gaz à effet de serre continuent d'augmenter dangereusement. Pour y remédier, nous avons besoin de développer un système de transport aérien européen durable. Ce système ne pourra bien entendu advenir sans l'engagement et l'accompagnement de nos villes et de nos régions. Nous devons évidemment anticiper par des études poussées et investir pour articuler au mieux les grands axes structurants du réseau transeuropéen avec nos transports locaux. Au comité des régions, nous défendons des principes très clairs, la prise en compte des externalités négatives dans le prix des transports, le principe du pollueur-payeur pour financer le report modal vers les modes de transport les plus vertueux. Aujourd'hui, nous saluons la nouvelle version du règlement RTET qui répond à des demandes portées depuis longtemps par le comité. Il donne, vous l'avez dit, davantage de place aux nœuds urbains, aux tronçons transfrontaliers et il fait le lien avec les plans de mobilité urbaine durable. Au comité, nous allons travailler maintenant à chercher à identifier les pistes d'amélioration de cette proposition de règlement. Nous pourrons ainsi vous faire remonter toutes les suggestions visant à ce que les questions économiques, sociales, d'aménagement durable et équitable du territoire soient abordées le plus intelligemment et le plus finement possible. Vous le savez, nous sommes des capteurs du ressenti des citoyens sur nos territoires et il est évident qu'ils ont besoin de croire en une Europe qui vise à améliorer le bien-être commun. Et pour y croire, il faudra, il, voit, il faudra voir se réaliser, par exemple, des infrastructures de transport collectif qui nous relieront les uns aux autres, qui nous offriront une mobilité plus efficace, moins polluante, décarbonée. C'est un domaine capital que les transports, car ils doivent être l'expression d'une Europe forte et ambitieuse qui investit dans notre avenir. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Madame Boudino. Uh, the floor now to Ms. Verkapera from the Renew Europe Group. Kiitos, puheenjohtaja, hyvä komissaari. Euroopassa tavoitteena on päästö, päästötön autoilu vuoden 2035 alusta alkaen. Haluamme siis vähentää liikenteen päästöjä aika rajusti. Tarvitsemme kaikki alueet, kaupungit ja kylät mukaan. Tarvitsemme paikallisia tekoja. Ensinnäkin haluan kysyä sinulta, joko sinun omalla alueella ja kunnassasi on tiekartta hiilidioksidipäästöjen vähentämiseen? Oletteko ilmoittautuneet mukaan jo hiilineutraalit ja älykkäät kaupungit verkostoon? Ja oletko itse tehnyt ja antanut ilmastolupauksia. Mitä paikallisesti, paikalliset teot voivat konkreettisesti sitten olla liikenteen päästöjen vähentämiseen? Kaikki lähtee tavoitteista, konkreettisista suunnitelmista ja rakenteista. Jos haluatte edistää pyöräilyä ja kävelyä, tarkoittaa se liikkumisen olosuhteiden panostamista. Pitää rakentaa toimivat pyöräilyväylät ja huolehtia niiden kunnosta. Kun meillä Suomessa sataa lunta, lähtee aurausautot puhdistamaan pyöräteit, tiet ja jo varhain priorisoidussa järjestyksessä. Siksi meillä pyöräillään myös talvella todella paljon. Jos taas halutaan edistää sähkö- ja biokaasukäyttöistä autoilua, Tarvitsemme verotuksellisia kannustimia, toimivia julkisia lataus- ja tankkauspisteitä sekä autoteollisuuden uusia innovaatioita. Oma sähköautoni muuten on, näyttää toimivan hyvin täällä pohjoisen talvessa. Julkisen ja raskaan liikenteen päästöjen vähentämisen tarvitaan myös ratkaisuja. Teknologisen kehity, teknologian kehity, kehittyessä kaupunkien joukkoliikenne, kaupunkien joukkoliikenne pitää siirtää sähkö- tai biokaasukäyttöiseksi. Voimme edistää myös lähijunaliikenteen mahdollisuuksia. 
TNT-verkostosta haluaisin sanoa sen, että uudistuksen painopiste tulee olla rajat ylittävissä liikennehankkeissa, joissa joukkoliikenne, raskas liikenne ja, ja tavarankuljetus tulee, tulee huomioida. Euroopan vihreän siirtymän toteutus ja siinä onnistuminen on pitkälti kiinni perusteollisuuden ja energiatuotannon ratkaisusta, mutta erityisesti paikallisten asukkaiden toimintojen, toimintatapojen muutoksesta. Ja me olemme kaikki osa muutosta. Thank you very much. The floor now to Mr. Marsilio from the ECR Group. Grazie, signor Presidente. Conseguire l'ambizioso obiettivo dell'Unione Europea di ridurre del 90% le emissioni dei trasporti entro il 2050 sarà possibile solo con un approccio integrato e multimodale che coinvolga tutti i modi di trasporto. La strategia per una mobilità sostenibile e intelligente infatti è strettamente legata all'aumento del trasporto ferroviario, il quale genera, come evidenziato ampiamente nel corso delle iniziative che si sono svolte nel 2021, l'anno europeo delle ferrovie, costi inferiori rispetto ad altre forme di trasporto. Il carattere multimodale della transizione necessaria in tema di mobilità è rispecchiato dalla proposta di revisione della rete transeuropea dei trasporti, in cui è delineata la visione dell'infrastruttura di trasporto del futuro lungo i corridoi prioritari dell'UE e in tutti i modi di trasporto. Colgo l'occasione a tal proposito per ringraziare la commissaria Valean e l'intera commissione per aver deciso di portare al Parlamento, che auspichiamo vorrà approvarla, tale proposta di revisione, che non esito a definire di importanza storica per l'Abruzzo e per l'Italia intera. Questa revisione sancisce infatti l'inserimento nelle reti europee di tutta la fascia adriatica, da Ancona a Foggia, recependo una istanza che abbiamo sostenuto di concerto con le regioni Marche, Molise e Puglia, un'intesa tra regioni che ho avuto l'onore di coordinare e che mirava esplicitamente all'inclusione nella rete CORE della sezione Ancona Bari lungo l'asse adriatico e delle sezioni trasversali che collegano il Mar Tirreno all'Adriatico, prerequisito essenziale per appartenere ad un corridoio. È un risultato molto significativo, anche se solo nella inclusione della rete Extended Core, tanto più che la Commissione nel negoziato con gli Stati nazionali si è posta legittimamente con un atteggiamento prudente e conservativo, nella comune consapevolezza che le infrastrutture inserite nella rete Core eh, impegnano lo Stato nazionale a realizzarle. Va dato atto al governo di aver, italiano di aver sostenuto e reso credibile la proposta dell'Abruzzo e delle regioni adriatiche, investendo fondi consistenti necessari al completamento delle opere infrastrutturali cruciali in ordine tra l'altro all'intero finanziamento del progetto della ferrovia Roma Pescara e alla realizzazione oltre che al finanziamento degli, degli interventi sulle autostrade A14, A24 e A25 e della rete ferroviaria adriatica appunto tra Lecce e Bologna. È importante sottolineare in definitiva due passaggi, il fatto di avere un corridoio sul capo orientale e un caposaldo che rafforza ulteriormente il collegamento con Civitavecchia e con Roma, costituendo la precondizione per un corridoio trasversale. E l'esito positivo del confronto conferma ancora una volta di più come sia preziosa la collaborazione e l'ascolto tra le regioni e l'Europa. Grazie. Grazie mille. Mr. McDonnell from the EA Group, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Chair. Let me focus on a number of issues. Uh, connectivity and accessibility are essential in assuring social, economic and territorial cohesion, and therefore transport affordability must be taken into consideration when devising new policies especially for those regions that are dependent on maritime and aviation as a sole means of connection to the continental platform. My city of Galway is completely congested, so outer ring roads to take cars from the city must be part of the overall transport planning, which will allow for revitalizing towns and city centres. We welcome the Commission's invitation to strengthen links between airports, ports and rail network. Sadly, in Ireland, progress on rail outside of the Dublin Cork route is lacking and we would welcome progress and investments in regions, especially the Western Rail Corridor in Ireland. At the same time, I call on you, Commissioner, not to overlook the situation of regional airports 
that have been suffering heavily from the crisis. Regional airports play a key role in ensuring economic, social and territorial cohesion. In some regions this is necessary not only for the sake of accessibility and tourism, they are also a source of employment. Regional airports like Shannon, Knock, Donegal and Kerry airports provide a vital service to our communities and allow for tourism and business to function in a globalised world. I am very conscious that island regions like Karska and the Iron Islands in Ireland cannot function without airports and we need to ensure that the regions are not left behind. Finally, on a subject close to my heart, we need to make transport and mobility more accessible to all of our citizens. For too long we have ignored the needs of our disabled and elderly community. I believe there is great scope for using smart technology to increase access for our disabled to transport and mobility services. Nobody should be left behind as we head towards a newer, greener and socially friendly mobility policy. Thank you very much. Mr. Hustler from the Greens, please. We cannot hear you, Mr. Hustler. There is no sound. Sehr geehrter Herr Vorsitzender. Okay. Vielen Dank. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren. Ich vertrete Baden-Württemberg im Ausschuss der Region. Das Geburtsland des Automobils Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Bosch haben den Sitz in unserem schönen Bundesland. Heute steht die Automobilwirtschaft vor einem tiefgreifenden Strukturwandel. Die Schlagworte Klimaneutralität und Digitalisierung stehen für diesen Umbruch, der mit großen Herausforderungen verbunden ist. Die Landesregierung von Baden-Württemberg hat daher bereits 2017 den Strategiedialog Automobil Baden-Württemberg ins Leben gerufen. Denn für die Regionen, in denen viele Arbeitsplätze und ein bedeutender Teil der Wertschöpfung an der Automobilindustrie hängen, ist die erfolgreiche Transformation Voraussetzung für das wirtschaftliche Überleben. Daraus ist jetzt schon klar, dass die Verkehrswende vor allem vor Ort in den Regionen und in den Kommunen umgesetzt werden muss. Daher ist es wichtig aus meiner Sicht, dass die Regionen stärker in den Fokus rücken und eine stärkere Vernetzung der von der Automobilwirtschaft geprägten Regionen ist über die bisherigen Formate hinaus sinnvoll. Ich freue mich daher, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, dass Sie offen sind, unsere Impulse in Ihren gesetzgeberischen Planungen aufzunehmen. Und wir, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, sind gerne bereit, uns hier einzubringen. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to give to Commissioner Valean uh, the floor for a first uh, reaction to what you've heard so far, if you agree. Yes, absolutely. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Of okay. course, we can hear you and we can... Okay, very well. Well, thank you very much for all your comments. Uh, there are uh, topics which, uh, of course, uh, there are on, uh, on the minds of the citizens and policymakers. Uh, into this transition, which is um, proposed to be a truly revolutionary one. If I take only the subject of the automotive industry, which was raised by you, I can understand very well that regions in which um, you have important uh, manufacturers, either for automotive directly or for associated industries, there are a lot of worries about the future because uh, the future, the way it is proposed to tackle the climate change is uh, one with um, a tremendous change in uh, um, the design of the car. And this, of course, impacts um, industry itself uh, in terms of retechnologization, in terms of uh, changing uh, the jobs. Or um, So a lot of worries I can understand. Um, it's true, but it's true that uh, this kind of change is needed. The proposal of the Commission, even though I'm answering for it, it's uh, not a transport file. It's um, coming from the Klima people uh, regarding especially the CO2 standards for cars, is implying that um, and proposing um, an end to the combustion engine. I know in various parts of Europe this is uh, still uh, in debate. Um, and we need a lot of um, research and innovation and um, uh, all the technologies we have on the market in order to make sure that this transition is um, um, successful. 
That being said, there is a bet which uh, the industry and the um, policy makers are, are making on um, electric cars. This is what we hear. Um, and there is a dilemma, the type of uh, chicken and egg. Should we have more infrastructure for uh, charging? Uh, first or more car electric cars and then the infrastructure follow. We are trying to break this uh, through our uh, AFIR, AFIR, the Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Regulation, um, trying to uh, set uh, targets for um, deployment of the infrastructure uh, on uh, public along our corridors and um, in the cities. Uh, also, is the obligation that new buildings will have recharging uh, 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 stations. Um, this, we hope, will encourage the increase of the volume. So we are aware that many member states are stimulating the uptake of electric cars by um, um, heavily subsidizing uh, the buy of an electric car. So let's hope that uh, our automotive industry will be able to adapt and remain competitive in a global world while uh, providing uh, us uh, cleaner vehicles uh, for the future. Um, it is a debate to continue and I really hope um, in the end um, all these um, policies will be successful and will um, retain the jobs and uh, the competitiveness of one of the most successful industries in Europe, which is the automotive industry. Apart from that, of course, uh, there is a debate if an engine should uh, maybe run uh, on uh, um, sustainable fuel, which is, uh, remains uh, uh, liquid. And this is something uh, I'm looking uh, also following to see how um, the uh, industry is uh, evolving with um, innovation and technologies and the increased volumes of this kind of fuels to see how the mix will be uh, looking uh, for the future. But I put this aside because the automotive industry is also a worry of uh, my colleagues with internal market and the climate. Um, uh, of course, for the heavy truck industry, because it was raised by someone, uh, there are uh, different um, requirements. Uh, but there are also movements from the industry. There is a lot of betting on um, hydrogen. The batteries are less, um, let's say, successful for uh, um, this kind of operations. Um, but um, still LNG and um, hydrogen for the future, it's something which uh, can um, provide an alternate, more sustainable alternative for powering uh, long distance and heavy trucks. Um, well, um, many of you raise the issue of um, sustainable alternate, uh, sustainable mobility in um, uh, urban areas. I think uh, this is uh, key for our proposal. Of course, it depends a lot on uh, the willingness and um, um, of uh, the cities themselves. Um, we are introducing um, um, this obligation for uh, the urban nodes to have uh, um, um, sustainable uh, um, urban mobility plans to better connect with the multimodality um, in order to try to reduce the externalities uh, in, uh, in the cities. Um, so I've mentioned that we have 424 um, EU cities um, on the TNT network. Uh, which um, get the status of an urban node, but with the status um, comes the obligation of having a sustainable urban mobility plan and to collect uh, the data. Uh, we are also preparing um, a commission recommendation to the member states on the national support program for these sums. Uh, with public transport and active mobility, uh, meaning uh, walking and cycling at the heart, because many of you said uh, rightfully that uh, collective transport is uh, is key for uh, sustainability of the cities, and um, uh, this is true, and this is something we support and uh, agree with. Um, we'll have more uh, targeted EU funding. Um, mm, 
and um, we'll try to create better synergies between different programs, especially to support um, this action point. For example, under the Horizon Europe uh, Research and Innovation Program, we recently kicked off a mission, a mission uh, to create uh, 100 climate neutral and smart cities by 2030 turning the cities into living labs that uh, we hope um, will inspire others with concrete solution how uh, to become climate neutral and smart. Um, again, for more uh, effective uh, zero emission, uh, freight logistics and last mile deliveries, um, we um, 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 insist, um, uh, we announced this in the, into the framework uh, also next week we are going, um, or well, let's see if next week or in the weeks to come, we'll publish uh, guidance on passenger transport on demand for uh, taxis and private hire vehicles um, with drivers. So a lot of uh, work here and um, a lot of possibilities for financing this type of programs for having uh, cities uh, becoming more uh, sustainable in terms of mobility um, and this uh, answers uh, some of your um, um, statements and uh, yeah uh, for polluter pay we have several instruments for seeing or this ETS it is proposed ETS for road we have the euro vignette in, um, in, the, um, in debate in uh, between the parliament and the uh, council. So um, this is a principle we keep in mind for uh, everything and plus we added this do not harm uh, principle for um, everything we are uh, doing further and this is embedded in all our policies. So um, yes, Italy, Italy is um, uh, looking very well <laughs> in reality and on the map for, um, for the network. Um, I know uh, there is a lot of uh, commitment from the government and this we have seen by foreseeing a uh, lot of money uh, from the national budget so, um, to support uh, network projects. Now uh, Italy will have these uh, two uh, freight corridors, uh, the one for passengers uh, remaining uh, in the central axis north south and also uh, the one on the east uh, you'll have the um, um, a net a core port uh, Civita Vecchia which is a novelty so it is a lot of uh, movement and uh, commitment and uh, the maps are looking very well for especially for this connectivity north uh, south to be um, uh, strengthened um, the same for Ireland for, for Ireland we um, we understand the new reality is that Ireland needs to be better connected now with the continent uh, after uh, uh, Brexit. So um, 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 on the 10T network um, in uh, Ireland, um, we provide a different road and rail connection to border crossing uh, with Northern Ireland um, to ensure the territorial continuity with the whole island. Moreover, um, I know that the authorities are conducting an analysis of the rail network on the whole um, island, which could lead uh, to better rail connection. Um, then um, on the revision, we have reinforced the marit maritime links uh, between the continent and Ireland, and we have new provisions uh, of the maritime space, uh, which will uh, allow uh, to establish more connections with the continental Europe. Um, we recognize this, and it was also about the regional airports. I personally support them uh, very much, and uh, there are um, policies in um, we have, uh, both uh, regarding uh, state aid due to this um, um, pandemic, um, difficult situation in aviation sector and in airports in particular, there are public service of obligations um, and I, I recognize uh, their importance for the connectivity of the people and the economy of um, uh, islands and the uh, outmost regions. So it's something um, I am uh, supported supporting a lot. So um, that in a nutshell, um, but let's continue with others. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Commissioner Valian. 
Uh, I would like to give the floor now to Ms. Zdanowska from the EPP. We cannot hear you, Ms. Zdanowska. Okay. Okay, thank you. Once again. Szanowna Pani Komisarz, drogie koleżanki i koledzy. Mobilność miejska ma kluczowe znaczenie w procesie transformacji ekologicznej. Unia powinna zintensyfikować swoje wysiłki dla jak najszybszego włączenia do sieci TNT nie tylko infrastruktury liniowej, ale całych węzłów miejskich obejmujących duże aglomeracje, tak na przykład jak Łódź, o czym już przed chwileczką była uprzejma wspomnieć Pani Komisarz, jak ważny jest ten element w kluczowym w aspekcie mobilności. W ciągu ostatnich kilkunastu lat Łódź wykonała ogromną pracę na rzecz modernizacji systemu transportu publicznego, zwłaszcza szynowego i tworzenia zintegrowanych węzłów multimodalnych. Środki europejskie były tu kluczowe i znacznie przyspieszyły ten proces inwestycji. Wiemy, że ostatnia mila pasażera nie będzie mogła odbyć się transport, jeżeli nie będzie mogła odbyć się transportem zbiorowym, to często pasażer nie wybierze tego transportu publicznego w ogóle. Dlatego szczególnie teraz niezbędne jest duże wsparcie, a następnie rozbudowa torowisk i wymiana ta transportu, co pozwoli samorządom rozwijać przyjazny w środowisku transport publiczny. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much. Ms. Fernandez Viana now from the Renew Europe Group. Muy buenos días a todos. Muchas gracias, presidente, querida comisaria, queridos colegas. Al igual que para muchas regiones, la revisión del reglamento de la Red Clas Europea de Transportes es vital para, para Cantabria y especial importancia para mi región. En cuanto al desarrollo de las infraestructuras, en Cantabria estamos convencidos de que el establecimiento de una conexión ferroviaria eficaz entre Santander y Bilbao en el país vasco vecino será un gran paso hacia adelante. En su propuesta de mediados de diciembre, esta sección sigue apareciendo en la red global y soy muy consciente de que el horizonte de 2030 se acerca rápidamente. Sin embargo, el nuevo plazo intermedio del 2040 que ustedes proponen ahora para adelantar la financiación de partes importantes de la red nos abre una ventana de oportunidad en mi región. Es evidente que el hito de 2040 se ha añadido para acelerar la finalización de la red con vistas a alcanzar los objetivos climáticos de la Unión para 2050 y la conexión ferroviaria santander Bilbao contribuirá sin duda a la consecución de esos objetivos. Hay una necesidad urgente de actuar y no podemos esperar hasta el 50 para que esta conexión sea una realidad. Por lo tanto, presidente, vamos a seguir luchando en el procedimiento legislativo que se abre ahora en esta sesión. Gracias, gracias. Thank you very much, Mr. Conrad from the EPP, please. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Mr. President, dear colleagues, dear Commissioner Valian, thank you for this interesting and important debate and for being here today. I rep represent German cities and I'm the mayor of Saarbrücken, a truly green and sustainable city, but also a city where the car industry is the most important industry and employer. Like millions of families in Europe uh, who depend on this industry, people in our city look with concern at the current development. We need a process of adaptation, but not disruption. Adaptation means we need to build the necessary infrastructure. Therefore, two things are mainly needed, efficiency and money. Efficiency can be improved if cities and regional authorities are involved in the process of implementing national strategies. Sufficient funds are needed for the infrastructure development, especially for 10T infrastructure. Funding must be fully provided through the Connecting Europe facility and national programs. This must not be left to cities and regions. Otherwise, poorer regions will lose out in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bianco from the PES. Grazie, Presidente. Complimenti alla Commissaria per la determinazione con cui ha esposto un programma di valorizzazione di un trasporto diverso. Eh, però non basta questo. Quello che sta accadendo in questi giorni in Ucraina eh, ci preoccupa terribilmente. L'aumento forse nato del costo del carburanti è veramente oltre ogni limite. Credo, Commissaria, che bisogna intraprendere una strada molto forte verso le fonti alternative 
eh, io ho fatto un rapido calcolo eh, qui a Catania e in Sicilia se su tutti gli edifici pubblici, eh, scuole, eh, parcheggi noi mettessimo impianti fotovoltaici eh, la mia città a Catania che è una città metropolitana di un milione di abitanti e l'intera Sicilia che è una regione di oltre 5 milioni di abitanti sarebbe totalmente autosufficiente bisogna intraprendere con grande forza e incoraggiare questa trasformazione non solo della mobilità ma anche dell'approvvigionamento energetico verso forme nuove e coraggiose grazie e in bocca al lupo Thank you very much, Mr. Dexter, please, from the EPP. Mr. Florian Schutz from the PES group, please. Mr. Hegedus from the ECR. Tisztelt biztos asszony, a városoknak kiemelt szerepük van a tömegközlekedés fejlesztésében, a járműpark modernizálásában, az elektros mobilitási eszközök minden szélesebb körű biztosításával, és mindezekhez nagyban hozzájárulhatnak az Európai Unió támogatási lehetőségei. Helyi vezetőként azonban kiemelten fontos képviselni azt, hogy az átállás igazságos legyen, a nemzeti fejlettségi szempontokat figyelembe vegye, és legfőképpen a lakosság minden nagyobb bevonásával valósuljon meg, úgy, hogy a polgárok ne káros útjai legyenek a változtatásoknak, hanem haszonélvezői. Az igazságos átmenet része, hogy a gazdasági szempontok össze legyenek hangolva a környezetvédelmi célkitűzésekkel és a lakosság érdekeivel. Városomban, Veszprémben is fontos az autóipar, ezért úgy gondolom, hogy támogatni kell a régiók bizottsága kezdeményezését, amelyben arra kéri a bizottságot, hogy hozzon létre egy igazságos átmeneti keretet a gépjárműipar számára, a települések gazdasági életének zavartalabb működése érdekében. Köszönöm szépen! Thank you very, very much. Mr. Vos from the Greens, please. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Vielen Dank, Frau Kommissarin, auch für diese Verordnung. Wir haben einige Änderungsanträge gebracht. Einmal glauben wir schon, dass die Zahl der Ladepunkte erhöht werden muss. Wir haben auch teilweise Tourismusströme, um einfach dem Henne-Ei-Prinzip zu begegnen und zu motivieren, auf elektrisch umzustellen. Und haben aber auch einen Antrag gemacht, dass wir die Kompatibilität der Systeme brauchen, über die digitalen Systeme, über Handy, iPhone, damit man nicht immer wieder neu blockiert ist, wenn man an eine Station kommt. Und ich ich glaube, ähm, ja, es wird eine große Transformation bei den Arbeitskräften, bei den hochqualifizierten Arbeitskräften geben, aber wir dürfen uns dem nicht verschließen. Wir wollen alle mobil bleiben. Elektromobilität ist die höchste Effizienz im öffentlichen Bereich, öffentlichen Verkehrsbereich, im äh, Individualverkehrsbereich und von daher müssen wir da schnell sein, damit wir eben auch alle äh, Individual, äh, individuell mobil bleiben. Und ich glaube, eins ist auch klar, und das ist ja auch mit vorgesehen, Schwertransporte, Schifffahrt wird weiter Treibstoffe, erneuerbare Treibstoffe brauchen. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Miss Ledl Rossmann, please, from the EPP. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident, Frau Kommissarin. Der Umwegtransit über den Brenner hat inzwischen wirklich ein unerträgliches Ausmaß erhalten. Jeder dritte Transit-Lkw, und das sind pro Jahr 880.000, fahren wegen einer verfehlten Wegekotzenpolitik der EU den Umweg über den Brenner, wie, so viel wie über keinen anderen Alpenpass. Die Route über den Brenner ist einfach viel zu billig, die Mautzuschläge müssen erhöht werden und wir brauchen endlich eine faire Kostenverteilung zwischen Schiene und Straße zwischen München und Verona. Die neue Wegekostenrichtlinie, die derzeit im Europäischen Parlament beraten wird, geht in die völlig entgegengesetzte Richtung, wenn emissionsarme LKWs bis zu 75 Prozent weniger Maut zahlen. Und wenn 2021 das europäische Jahr der Schiene war, werden anscheinend die verkündeten Ziele hier mit Füßen getreten und in die 
entgegengesetzte Richtung gearbeitet. Daher darf ich alle Kolleginnen und Kollegen bitten, wirken Sie auf die Mitglieder des EU-Parlaments aus Ihrem Land ein, damit die euro richtlinie in der derzeitigen Form nicht beschlossen wird. Es geht einfach um die Gesundheit der Menschen an den Transitrouten. Dankeschön. Thank you. Dankeschön. Mr. Drexler from the EPP is available. No. Okay. Mr. Florian Schutz from the PS. Sehr geehrter Herr Vorsitzende, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, danke für Ihre Ausführungen. Ich komme aus Wien. Die Stadt Wien hat sich zum Ziel gesetzt, bis 2040 klimaneutral zu sein. Dazu sind ambitionierte Maßnahmen auf allen Ebenen erforderlich. Die von der Europäischen Kommission vorgesehene Verschärfung bei den CO2-Emissionsnormen für neue Pkw und leichte Nutzfahrzeuge ist der Fair für uns ein wichtiger Schritt, um das zu erreichen. Was uns aber bei den Vorhaben der Kommission doch etwas fehlt oder nicht offen angesprochen wird, ist eine notwendige Gesamtsicht des Verkehrssektors. Dabei wird kein Weg an der Verkehrsverlagerung weg von der Straße hin zur Schiene und Wasserstraße führen. In den Städten heißt das, uns, heißt das für uns einen Vorrang für den öffentlichen Verkehr und andere emissionsfreie Arten der Mobilität. Nicht alles, aber im Bereich der Infrastruktur doch ein größter Anteil wird öffentlich finanziert. Eine neue grüne goldene Regel für Investitionen und klimafreundliche Maßnahmen ist daher notwendig und wir brauchen eine Flexibilitätsklausel dazu. Frau Kommissarin, die ehrgeizigen Ziele sind nur erreichbar, wenn wir gemeinsam handeln und auch wieder handeln können. Schaffen wir die Voraussetzungen dafür. Vielen Dank für Ihre Bemühungen. Thank you. Isilda Gomez will conclude our uh, debate from the member side, please. Muito obrigada, Sr. Presidente. Agradecer naturalmente à Sra. Comissária um, as informações que nos trouxe e a sua aposta, uh, e sobretudo numa área que eu gostaria de salientar aqui, que é, são as redes ferroviárias trans, transeuropeias. Eu penso que é importantíssimo porque, a médio prazo, Podemos com certeza deixar de fazer viagens de avião e passar a fazê-las de comboio, para além de que evitaria certamente as deslocações de muitos cidadãos uh, no seu automóvel próprio, na sua viatura própria e passaríamos a usar o comboio. Esta questão de, de, de deixarmos de andar de avião, sobretudo em, 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 situ, em situações que não são de longa distância, penso que é de ter em conta, porque temos que apostar fortemente na descarbonização, temos que apostar fortemente no ambiente e as redes ferroviárias transeuropeias poderão ser uma grande mais-valia para atingirmos este objetivo. Muito obrigada, Sr. Presidente. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I would like to give the floor now to Commissioner Valean for her concluding remarks. Commissioner, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you, Commissioner. Okay, now you can hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your comments and also for taking me uh, to your regions with uh, the comments you have um, made. Um, it's, it's a journey and we need uh, sustainable mobility to get there. Um, well, uh, again, you tackled upon uh, the urban mobility. This is very, very important. And I do believe that uh, I've mentioned and you will find in all our proposals and uh, in our further action and proposals and recommendations, the right instruments to act on this. I've mentioned already that there are various programs uh, which are funding all these uh, uh, plans uh, the cities have. We have funded uh, already um, initiatives in uh, cities and regions for um, uh, greening the public transportation. Uh, it was mentioned, for example, that uh, low carbon transport in cities is very important and it is financeable by uh, European Union and various uh, instruments we have. Um, it's very important to, um, to think, for example, that all the logistics in a city, if they would be, for example, electrified, this is very simple, or the public transportation, then um, already this is um, huge. 
and um, new services will uh, emerge for uh, making um, easier the journeys with sustainable modes inside the city if data is going to be shared. So uh, we are looking forward to, um, to see this kind of movements in the cities and we are ready to support this uh, type of initiatives. Um, again, uh, some of you raised the worries around um, the automotive industry because you have important uh, um, uh, manufacturers in your region. As I said, I understand that and um, well, we hope with all uh, the corrective and the support programs uh, EU and uh, national governments um, would be able to um, use so that uh, the impact uh, would, would be a negative one. Uh, I'm saying also that there were a lot of calculations made by my colleagues in the European Commission that uh, the benefits of uh, this uh, We have lost you, Commissioner. Yeah. Now, you, now you got me back? Yes, you are back. <laughs> okay, so saying there are um, analysis saying that uh, the benefits of this uh, change in policy um, with more sustainable um, alternatives uh, for mobility, are um, the benefits are greater than uh, um, uh, than uh, the, you know, the problems, let's put it this way. So um, let's hope this analysis are right. And uh, as I said, with all the support from the European Union and the national government, um, things will, um, will won't be uh, won't have a negative impact. Of course, more sustainable energy for uh, everything inside cities, as it was mentioned. Uh, is the example from Sicily. Um, rail versus road, uh, I wouldn't put any uh, mode of transportation against another, but it's true that we are um, aiming our policies to support uh, more the sustainable ones, which are rail and inland waterways. Um, it is something um, embedded in uh, our objectives. And uh, with the European Year of Rail, with our uh, Rail Action Plan, um, what we are trying to do is by putting a price on um, the pollu more polluting um, uh, modes, this would incentivize, of course, and make uh, more competitive uh, the sustainable ones. So this is this is one thing said. But then you have to have a look at all the uh, planned investments in the network for rail. We have supported from the European Union, I don't know, percentage is like 70% of our money went for rail um, infrastructure projects. Of course, this is expensive, but this is the plan we have, and um, we uh, are supporting the development of the network, and um, uh, it's smartening, meaning also deployment of digital solutions along the network, which would um, make uh, rail uh, freight and passengers uh, more uh, competitive than other modes. Um, yeah, so this is uh, again uh, some of the ideas. You will find them in all our proposals, and uh, um, I'm inviting you if you have uh, uh, questions or uh, uh, comments or uh, you need more information um, to tell us so um, we can answer you, even though we'll see probably each other uh, in a while. Thank you very much, President, for inviting me today. I'm looking forward to uh, continue the cooperation with the Committee of Regions uh, because this is very important. As I said at the beginning, you will play a tremendous role in the implementation of our policies. So that's why it's very important to keep a close cooperation. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Valean. It has been a great honor to have you with us in our plenary and to discuss this very interesting debate on EU Green Deal and on sustainable smart mobility in our regions, uh, cities and uh, villages. Uh, the issues are of great concern of our members, as you saw during our debate. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity for any of the members who wish to ask you questions or comments. 
uh, to send it to your uh, office. Uh, and uh, of course, we will be able to speak again soon in some of our future plenaries. Thank you very much, Commissioner Valean and dear uh, members, uh, colleagues who have contributed to this important debate. Now, dear colleagues, we will move to the next item of our agenda. I must remind you.